All right, everybody, we are going to take a look today at how we can make a map here in QGIS using data that was sent to us by Mohammed Arjunija from the Relief and Rebuilding Program at the High Atlas Foundation. And he sent us this wonderful document that contains this data table. And the data table has these different columns of the province, the municipality, the village, number of people, number of households, activities, and percent complete for the 17 project areas, 17 affected villages that needed improved access to clean drinking water because of waterborne diseases and particularly the earthquake that was so devastating. <clears throat> and in this document, most of the villages have a clickable hyperlink that then leads to the location of that village and it has the uh, DMS or uh, degrees, minute, seconds. There's degrees there, 31 degrees, minute, 11 minutes, 59.4 seconds, north, 7 degrees, 44 minutes, 27.3 seconds, west, which is negative value. Uh, it has those values, so it's go right in. And if you right-click on that point, <clears throat> you'll see it in digital decimal, which is or, or decimal degrees, which is 31.19998, comma negative 7.74094. The difference between this number and this number is that <clears throat> if you wanted to calculate the minutes, you'd say 31. See, there's 31. Um, 31. Uh, degrees, that's the same, and then 19998, that would have to be multiplied by 60 in order to get the 11 minutes, and then whatever residual has to be multiplied again by 60 to get the seconds, and that's how you convert those, otherwise you have to divide to get those. So, but we have both of these, and I was able to copy these. I would go into this table, and I kept opening up the link and looking at each new village and taking that number and pasting in the spreadsheet, then right-clicking here and copying that to the clipboard until finally I added all the information into the spreadsheet. So there's my latitude and DMS that I got by calculating, by, sorry, by copying that part of it here, the north part, I would copy it over and I'd come in here to the latitude in degrees, minutes, and seconds, DMS, and paste it there. Then I would go back into here and copy the longitude and then I would go into my spreadsheet and paste it in the longitude part of the degrees, minutes, and seconds. And then I would go back to the map and I would right click here take those and I would go into the spreadsheet and I would paste those in here, but they're bundled, separated by a comma. So finally, I selected this entire row after I'd gotten all this information and I didn't yet at that point have this table column or this table column. So forget those. So I, I had this that I copied from the map and I had this that I copied from the map. And then I wanted to turn that into this latitude and longitude in decimal degrees to bring into QGIS. So what I did is I selected this whole column and then I went to data and then I said that I wanted to do text to columns and I said separate by comma and you see it separate them by comma and then when I said okay it created these two columns separating them by this comma here and then I named one of them latitude and another one longitude. <clears throat> so with that information in my table, I then saved my data table because I copied all this other stuff that you can see. I copied that from this table. So every single column I just copied over into my data table. And then I had this latitude longitude that I just put in. And then I go and I do file and I do save as and I saved it as not an ODF spreadsheet but as a text CSV and that 
comma separated value, CSV, text comma separated value, is what is read by QGIS. So having that table, if I come in here and I say for layer, I want to add a layer, which is the, um, let me find it here, add delimited text layer. So comma separated values, the commas are what delimit, delimit the text. So that's what you want to do is add a delimited text layer in there. And then you come in here and you say the file name, which is going to be the High Atlas Foundation Project Sites CSV, not the ODS, not the Excel. So this one here, and pop that in. And make sure this encoding is at UTF-8, because if it's not, then things get really messed up. So usually it is UTF-8. It says the layer name is going to be Project Sites for HAF. File format is comma separated values and CSV that we have, so that's fine. And then you look down and you should see at the bottom of this table under the, uh, turn that off, file format we've already got, sample data. You should see that all that data is in there. And you should see that the latitude and longitude that we had separated out using that um, when we took this column and we told it to go to data and we told it to go to text to columns, that created the latitude and longitude column. And that is what we see here. Uh, and so when you scroll by, you should see all that data is in there. And is it in there? It should be, but yes, latitude and longitude are there. So then make sure that under your geometry definition that the X field is the longitude because longitude is going along the X axis and latitude is up and down. That's your Y field. And that usually is picked up if you've named these right by default. Just don't get confused because latitude appears first here. I think it goes in the X field. It's the longitude that goes in the X field. Think about an XY plane from your geometry classes and think about the X axis running horizontally and Y axis running vertically. And it is latitude that uh, goes up and down the planet and longitude goes across the planet, right? So latitude is from the North Pole to the South Pole along the Y field and longitude is left to right the Western and Eastern hemispheres. So if you've got that, you do know that the negative numbers in longitude mean it is in the Western, no, sorry, Eastern Hemisphere, Western Hemisphere. Um, anyway, that side where Morocco is. Uh, and then the numbers here are from the equator going north. So this is the north of the equator. And this is to the negative, meaning it is to the east of the Greenwich Meridian, where we get Greenwich Mean Time, at Greenwich being England. So... That then is added to your layers here. And now you see all those points. Hey, those are the data points of the village. How do we know that? Well, first of all, let's go in here and right click and go to open attribute table. And you can see that this information, when I go to the village of Tanamurti and click on that row, it lights up in yellow down there. And when I Want to go to Anines? It lights up over there. You can always zoom to a village by clicking on it and then right clicking inside somewhere and then say zoom to feature and then boom, there it is that little yellow point there. Um, you can also go into the information, I believe, somewhere in here. There is the ability to find things. I think it's this one here. No, it's not. Uh, da, 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 da. If I can't find it, we'll come back. There it is right here. This little information symbol, and you can identify like this, and then you get the information coming up. So you can go like that, and it comes up. You can go like that, and you can get the information on each of the points like that. So isn't that fun? But you're still thinking, wait a minute, this must be a map. So where the heck is the map? Well, now that you have your points, it's fairly easy. This is why I drop the points in first, because now when we go to the web and we go to quick map services, if we go to Google and we get a Google hybrid map, 
boom, Morocco appears right behind them. And so now you can see the points are right in there. And they should be where they're supposed to be. So one way that you can verify that, so Google Hybrid has a lot of the labels on there, like a Gerd Dortan is there. And when we click on this, sure enough, there's a Gerd Nortan. Similarly, if I go back here to Agoons, yep, that's Agoons from our table. But supposing we want our own labels. If we want our own labels, you click on the project sites, and double click on it to bring up the symbology. It says no labels. So you take that and you say, I want single labels. And then you want the text to be perhaps a bright yellow. The mustard color is kind of cool. Or maybe more Moroccan looking, more sort of, yeah, more something like that. Um, fitting in with the landscape a little bit more. And, <clears throat> and then after you select that color, you can change your opacity, your project styles. Um, it helps to go from points to pixels and then go to the formatting. Not necessary. Font is missing. Huh? So pick a font that you like. A uh, modern font, maybe. Yeah, it's awful. So I like that font at all. What about a Georgian bold? There it is. Lormitz in there. Um, then go to your buffer or mask if you want one. Not necessarily to have one there. I think we're okay here. And then when you hit apply, you can see what it looks like. There's our names of ours. Maybe that's too small. So let's make this 20 pixels. There we are, a little bit bigger. And then because I said pixels, it zooms in and out with the names. However, why does it say I'll house everywhere? Okay, so go back to your project site symbols, double click on it and see what field is it using in order to get the text. It says the value is province. So it picked the very first field. If you look at our table, our first field here is province and the names we want for the villages. So with that, we can come back in here and say, I don't want province, I want village. And then apply that. And now we have the villages, but they don't show up well because they are not uh, done with any kind of um, any kind of formatting. So maybe there's a way to I'll probably have to go to a buffer, draw a text buffer, and then make that buffer again in pixels, make it one pixel and apply and see what that does. It's cool, but it's ugly. So, what if we make the size here a little bit smaller? All right. Um, the color is white. We don't like that. Maybe we use black. And then apply that. There we go. Now you can see it a little better. And then we can bring it back up to one pixel. Yeah. So now we can see the names of our villages as we zoom in. Same thing with the symbol itself. If you want the symbol to be more uh, stand out, go to Symbology, and let's use the Effect Drop Shadow, because that one's pretty cool. And then, bang, we get these things that are big here. Still, I don't like my labels. I think my color of text is actually weak. So let me bring this up to make it super bright, even though it doesn't match the landscape as much. Let's try that. Yeah, it's easier to see. All right, so now I've got this map and I've got these uh, these labels for each of the villages in there. So all that's coming off of that, that data table that I was able to just bring in a second ago. And there's a lot of different maps that you can use. If you would prefer, you can go to web and, I'm sorry, yes, to web to quick map services, go into the ESRI and pick an ESRI satellite if you like. And then you can see how they look on the S3 satellite. You can also, you can jump, jump between the Google Hybrid and the S3 satellite. And there's a lot of maps that you can bring in. Just don't forget to save your project. So I'll call this one, call this um, CSV Villages Test. All right. 
and okay. So and, and another another thing that's nice is if you go in and you find that you want in here to have a topo map, for example, then you can see the bit with the topography in there. If you want to add into this a map that is a S3 terrain map, off the topo, then you see terrain. You see we're definitely in the mountains here, evidently. And so many different maps to choose from. If we look at Mapbox satellite, then the Mapbox satellite <laughs> doesn't show up. Okay, so much for the Mapbox satellite. Get rid of that. That seems to be worthless. Remove that layer. Sorry, Mapbox satellite. Let's see if there's another good map we can use here. Um, OSM. An open topo map or open street map or OSM standard is good for many things. So let's put in the open topo map. Yeah, because that's got all the roads on it. So that's nice with a lot of different information in there and different colors. And if you uh, go to the attribute, is there an attribute? There's no attribute table for this. Um, yeah, no way for to easily find out what all those are if there's not a legend to the map, but it's a pretty map nonetheless. Uh, so open topo is good, and there's also a mesh. Uh, let's see, with OSM, you can get the standard map, and that one just has streets, but not topography. So the point is you get your data and you get your points, and then you can find all sorts of information about them. If I pick here and go there, then bang, that comes up. All right, so that's uh, a good use of the spreadsheet. Now, what if you want to get pictures into the spreadsheet? Now, to do that, I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet, and I'm going to add a column here that I'm going to call picture one, and I'm going to add another one called picture two, not picture one path, All right? And there you want to be able to put in paths to pictures. So if you have on your hard drive anywhere, you have some pictures. And I think mine are in the look back and up. Here I've got pictures. Okay, these are the project site photos. So if I wanted to find, for example, that I have in the village of Agun, so I've got two pictures here, and I can right click on this one and tell it to copy as path and find a goons down here and put this path in there. One thing I must do, however, after doing that, is I need to get rid of the quotation sign. Okay. And then that picture is there. And then if I want the second picture that I have, I will go back to my folder and find the second picture of Agoons and go copy as path and paste it in there. And I wonder, it'd be nice if I could just get rid of the quotation marks automatically. There is a way to do that. And I, that's when you're in QGIS. I'm in a spreadsheet, so I'm not sure how to do that in the spreadsheet. So right now we're just going to remove those. All right, so I've got those pictures in there. Let me save my spreadsheet. And of course, I'd have to reload the spreadsheet in here. So this project sites and what we did to change the colors and stuff, we're going to have to redo. But I think it's good to do this. So remove that entry. And once again, go to Layer and Add Layer. And go to your Add to Limited Text Layer. Pick your 
file. Ah, wait a minute. I didn't save it as a CSV, so it's very important that you save this again as the CSV. There we go. So let's overwrite that one. All right. And use that text format. All right. Now let's go back and let's find the CSV. There it is. And you should be able to see now that after the lat long is picture. And that information is there, but it is not yet able to yet open it. Um, latitude, longitude, yes, longitude, latitude are there. And that's good to know. Records, file format, is CSV. So we're all good to go. It's not letting us add it, so there's still something missing here. Let's see what that is. That is correct. That is correct. Point coordinates are there. And something is disturbing it. CRS must be selected. Aha, it tells you down there what's missing. So the coordinate system is missing. And to find the coordinate system, we're using, this is invalid projection, so go to 4326. That's the default. Now add it. And it comes up, and there's our points again. Now, as we remember, you want to click on this and go back to your symbology and pick the cool effect with the drop shadow and apply that and change it to pixels and make it 10 pixels and apply that. Maybe make it bigger. Let's go up to 20 and apply that. All right, that's good. And let's go to labels. Change it from no labels to single labels. Pick not province, but the name of the village. And pick color that's nice and bright. We have this color here. And the buffer size is to be drawn at one millimeter, and the color will be black. And apply that. Now we get all of our villages, and they're in there. And each of them now actually has, save this, uh, a place to do pictures. It's a goons where we put the picture, if you recall. So that should be a goons, and when we click on it, it shows that there are two pictures associated with it. And if you go few feature form, it should show up and it's not showing up. So the mode is fine. We do need to go and auto open form. Let's see what the, what the way is that we do so we can see the picture. So give me a moment. 